If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you. The Atari 2600, the console that started a revolution. If you grew up in the 70s, chances are you either had one or knew someone who did. Today, we are going to talk about one of the best selling games on the system. This innovative game would go on to sell over 4 million units. The name of the game is Pitfall. What famous movie was the inspiration for this game? What was the original name of this game? So swing on that vine and grab that treasure because this is the history of Pitfall. Now even though Pitfall was released in 1982, our story starts back in 1979 with a memo from the president of Atari to the programming staff. The memo was about which games were selling well so that the programmers could design more of these types. David Crane, Larry Kaplan, Alan Miller, and Bob Whitehead were four of Atari's superstar programmers and also known around Atari as the Fantastic Four. These four were responsible for a number of Atari's hit games. David Crane remembers that these four people were responsible for roughly 60% of Atari sales, which equaled out to about $60 million. They were only being paid $22,000 a year with no royalties and no credit. The four walked into the office of Atari CEO Ray Kassar and laid out their argument for programmer royalties and credit on each game sold. Mr. Kassar said that anybody could program a cartridge and that they were no more important than the guy putting the boxes together on the assembly line. The four superstar programmers decided to head out and start up a new company called Activision. They became the very first third party developer in history. Why did they choose the name Activision? Because in the phone book, Activision comes before Atari. While still at Atari, David Crane had been struggling with the idea of getting a fully articulated man up and running on an Atari 2600. For a couple of years, he would work on it, get frustrated, and then move on to another project. Finally, he sat down with an empty sheet of paper and drew a man right in the middle. Okay, he thought to himself, he's got the man, now where is he running? He drew two lines for a path. Okay, he thought, now what's in the background? So he drew some scenery. He sketched a few things to chase after. Within 10 minutes, he had his full design document for Pitfall. 1,000 programming hours later, the game was complete. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 sees you step into the shoes of Pitfall Harry as he attempts to grab 32 treasures within the 20 minute time limit. You have to traverse 255 screens while avoiding all of the obstacles in your path. The various treasures include gold, silver, money bags, and diamond rings. You have to collect eight of each item. The various pitfalls in your way include scorpions, snakes, fire, alligators, pits, and logs. You start the game with 2,000 points that can be depleted if you fall down holes or run into logs. You also start the game with 3 lives, so be careful. The 255 screens complete a circular maze. Once Harry has run through all the screens in one direction, he returns to the starting point and may continue if treasures were missed. How could you miss a treasure, you ask? Each underground screen is the equivalent of 3 above ground screens. While you may travel faster below the surface, you never know what you may have missed. When the game came out, you could send a photograph of your TV screen with 20,000 points or higher to be awarded an Explorer's Patch. This was essentially the very first achievement in video games long before Microsoft and Sony were doing it. Another innovation by the masters at Activision. The playability, graphics, and animation were phenomenal at the time and they still hold up today. The brain trust at Activision had to use all kinds of programming tricks and techniques to squeeze as much processing power out of the Atari 2600 as they could. This is why Activision games look so much better than anything else on the market. For example, David Crane wanted Pitfall to only offer one life instead of three. Just before the game went into production, 
his fellow programmers felt that three lives would be much better than one. To make this happen, he had to go through the code and free up a few extra bytes which took him roughly two extra weeks. This is how tightly packed the 4K ROM was. One one hundredth of one iPhone picture is roughly the same size as the entire Pitfall game. David Crane took inspiration for this game from the swashbuckling, treasure hunting, vine swinging adventures of Indiana Jones. The crocodile scene from Pitfall is in direct reference to the 1950s Heckle and Jekyll cartoon where the crazy magpies jump through the mouths of the crocodiles. The game would go on to sell over 4 million units on the Atari 2600 alone. This was the second highest selling Atari game of all time right behind Pac-Man. At the height of its popularity, they had to hire a staff of seven people to open mail five days a week. They estimated they were getting 14,000 letters a week. Thousands of people created homemade maps of the game and mailed them into Activision. There was a lot of Pitfall merchandise available as well. Everything from coloring books, to stickers, to board games, and even recently, they released an awesome retro action figure of Pitfall Harry. In 1983, as part of the Saturday Supercade on CBS, Pitfall Harry made his animated debut. The cartoon introduced his niece Rhonda as well as his cowardly lion Quick Claw. The initial title of the game was Jungle Runner, but it was changed at the last minute to Pitfall. The sound that Pitfall Harry makes when swinging on the vine is an electronic tone version of the Tarzan yell from the 1930s movies. The game received a very cool commercial and if you look closely you'll see a 13 year old Jack Black in his first acting gig. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Well, Harry and I just grabbed the van, swung through the trees, and over the tar pits and found the jungle treasure. It was really neat. If you haven't met Pitfall Harry, you're missing the year's most incredible video game adventure. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry, no other man will do. Pitfall, designed by David Crane for Activision. The game was converted to a number of home systems. These all play pretty much the same, but some of the graphical enhancements are really well done. First up was the Atari 800 version. The scenery has been given a significant boost in terms of detail. Lush trees are overflowing with branches and leaves, which really adds to the game. The gameplay is just as good as on the original Atari 2600. The Atari 5200 version is almost identical to this one. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next and it offers a few graphical enhancements over the 2600 version. It's very similar to the Atari 800 version, but not quite as detailed. The sound effects are a bit irritating, but at least the game does play good. The Intellivision version looks very similar to the original 2600. The colors may be a bit different, but graphically it looks to be almost exactly the same. The playability is just as good. The ColecoVision version looks really good, and it is a bit of a step up from the 2600. My main question is this, what the heck is Aquaman doing in a Pitfall game? The Pitfall Harry Sprite looks identical to the classic Aquaman character. The gameplay feels just as good as the 2600 version. In 1984, Pitfall 2 The Lost Caverns was released for the Atari 2600. Once again, the game was developed by David Crane. The game offered a larger world to explore, vertical scrolling levels, rivers that you can swim in, and hot air balloons you can travel in between sections. In order to use all of these enhancements, Mr. Crane developed a display processor chip or DSP to allow for improved graphics and four channel sound instead of the usual two channel sound. First thing you notice is that Harry has unlimited lives. When he dies, he loses points and travels back to his last checkpoint. Speaking of checkpoints, this was the first game in history to offer such a feature. The goal of the game is to rescue your niece Rhonda, Quick Claw, which is Harry's pet cowardly lion, and also a diamond ring. There are plenty of new pitfalls to avoid as well. In 1985, 
Activision licensed the game to Sega so they could release an arcade version. Rather than release the original, they went with the sequel, The Lost Caverns. This plays a lot like the original 2600 release, but the graphics have been beefed up immensely. There are lots of new obstacles to avoid such as spiders, rolling boulders, flying fish, and more. This version of the game was loosely converted to the Nintendo Entertainment System. This version of the game is horrible though, with large, ugly sprites and terrible colors. The scrolling is very choppy along with the animation. To be honest, it looks more like a Mario clone than an actual pitfall game. David Crane wants everybody to know he had nothing to do with the development of this horrendous game. In 1994, initially released on the Sega Genesis was Pitfall the Mayan Adventure. You take on the role of Pitfall Harry Jr. as he attempts to rescue his father, Pitfall Harry. The gameplay is similar to the original 2600 game, but there are branching paths you can take. Junior's abilities are more advanced than his father's old skill set of just running and jumping. He can climb and swing from a variety of ropes, duck to dodge high-flying projectiles, wield an array of his own throwing items, and crack a whip to keep crawling creatures at bay. You can even unlock the original 2600 version as an easter egg. The game is a lot of fun to play and any fan of Pitfall should check it out. The game was added to a number of Activision compilations over the years, including the Activision Atari 2600 Action Pack and the Activision Anthology. In 1998, Pitfall 3D Beyond the Jungle was released for the PlayStation 1. This game committed a huge sin when it comes to Pitfall in my opinion. They made the game in 3D. Pitfall is a game that should always use a 2D perspective. The controls are terrible in the game and it just didn't feel like Pitfall. The updated graphics and sounds were nice, but if it doesn't feel like Pitfall then what is the point? In 2004, Pitfall The Lost Expedition was released. This is another 3D Pitfall game, but this time around it's not quite as bad. The controls feel a little bit more natural, but again, the perspective is all wrong. The usual pitfalls are here, such as the crocodiles, quicksand, and more. If you insist that Pitfall needs to be in 3D, then perhaps this is the game for you. Pitfall is definitely a classic. People may think that the graphics are primitive, but back in the day they were very impressive especially considering how hard it was to program an Atari 2600. If you've never swung on a vine or hopped across alligator heads, then you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. It's still an incredibly fun game to play, even 36 years later. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my little channel can grow. Thanks for watching.